Hi guys, welcome to the second video for the topic Fibonacci Heaps. In this topic, we are going to learn how to perform different operations on Fibonacci Heaps and also calculate their time complexities. In the previous video, we learned that what are Fibonacci Heaps, all their properties and why Fibonacci Heaps are actually called as Fibonacci Heaps. And finally, we learned that how Fibonacci Heaps give a better time complexity as compared to their counterparts in heaps. So you can watch all this in my first video of Fibonacci heaps. I'll provide a link to that video in the side button. So let us look at the operations. So first of all, we will learn that how, to, how do we create a new heap, right? And it's time complexity. Then how do we insert an element in a Fibonacci heap? Then how do we find the minimum element in the Fibonacci heap? Then finally, we will learn how to perform the union or the merge operation between two Fibonacci heaps, H1 and H2, and what is its time complexity. So, we will be learning all these four operations in this video, which are relatively simple operations. Then in the next videos, we will be learning these three operations, which are relatively more complicated. That is how to delete the minimum element and its time, com and its time complexity. Then how to decrease the value of any node in a Fibonacci heap, then how to delete any element uh, in a Fibonacci heap, right? So we will look at these three operations in the next videos. And in this video, we will be looking at these four operations. And I'll ensure that I calculate step by step the time complexity for each and every operation. So let us start. So here I have drawn a Fibonacci heap in order to see the different operations. So now let us look at the insert operation first, okay? So suppose I want to insert an element with the value x in this Fibonacci heap, right? So how I'll do it? Like suppose I want to insert 12, okay? So if I want to insert 12 in this Fibonacci heap, all I have to do is that I will add this 12 in this root list. So this basically, this list or this first row of the Fibonacci heap is known as the root list. So I'll just add this 12 in this root list. I'll change some of the pointers, right? Earlier also this link was starting from here, but now the, uh, this pointer is pointing over here. And here again, I'll change the pointer for this one and it will point over here, right? So I'll just be changing some of the pointers. That's it, that's all we need to do. We just need to change some links and insert this 12 in the root list, right? Now, what is the time complexity of inserting an element in the Fibonacci heap? For that, I need you to recall something. So if you remember the amortized analysis or amortized time complexity computation about which I discussed in detail in my initial videos of this playlist, you will also know that I talked about potential method. That was the third method in amortized time complexity computation. So if you have not seen this video, I'll provide a link to that video in the side button. You can go and watch that. So we are going to use amortized analysis in order to find out the time complexity for each and every operation. Okay. So in case of potential method, every data structure has a potential function predetermined. Like suppose binary heap, also has a potential function that is predetermined like we learned in case of augmented stack in the video of potential method that it has a predetermined potential function which is number of elements in the stack. So potential function is equal to number of elements in the stack. So in the same way for Fibonacci heap the potential function is we represent the potential function in this way right t of h plus 2 into m of h. So why we are doing all this? Because we want to calculate the time complexity of inserting an element in Fibonacci heap, right? And we are doing it using the amortized analysis, not using the asymptotic analysis, using which you will directly say that the time complexity of this operation, because we are just changing some links, it will be order of one. We are not doing that. Because in case of Fibonacci heaps, amortized analysis gives a tighter bound 
or you can say that the amortized time complexity computation gives a much better estimation of the time complexity as compared to the asymptotic analysis. That's why we are doing using the amortized analysis over here. Okay, this is the potential function. Now you might be wondering, you already know that this is actually a symbol for the potential function of the heap h. Now what is th? th is number of trees in Fibonacci heap, right? fh, tree number of trees in the Fibonacci heap, right? And what is mh? mh is actually number of marked nodes in Fibonacci heap, right? I have already told in the previous video that every node has this field of mark of x, right? So this value m of h is actually equal to the total, num total number of nodes for which this value is 1, right? That's what we are talking about over here, okay? So now you have understood that th is equal to number of trees in fh and mh is equal to number of marked nodes in fh. So now let us calculate the time complexity for the insert operation. If you remember the formula for amortized cost is equal to actual cost plus change in potential, right? So amortized cost is equal to actual cost plus change in potential, right? So if you are not able to understand any of this, I request you to go and watch the video where I have explained the potential method in detail. The link will be provided in the side button. So amortized cost is written as CI cap is equal to CI, the actual cost plus change in potential, right? We can write change in potential as phi dash h minus initial potential as phi h, right? This h represents here the Fibonacci heap, okay? So now, what is the actual cost according to you for this operation? So the actual cost for this operation seems like order of 1, right? If we look at the asymptotic cost. So the actual cost is order of 1, right? Let us first talk about the initial potential, right? So let us assume that the initial potential, so before this insert operation, we had this Fibonacci heap H and its initial potential, we assume that it was T of H plus 2 into M of H, right? So here I'm writing down the initial potential, T of H plus 2 into M of H, right? This was the initial potential. What about the final potential? After we inserted this 12, what actually happened? Of course, you will say that a number of, that the node increased, but what else happened? You, as you can see over here, all these are trees. This is a, a tree, this is a tree, this is a tree. So even the number of trees increased, right? So initially, if the number of trees were T of H, now the number of trees will be T of H plus one, right? So now the number of trees will be T of H plus one. What about the a number of marked nodes? There is no change in the number of marked nodes. They are, whatever would be the number of marked nodes, that is M of H earlier, they will remain same, right? So this value will remain same, right? And now this is basically my final potential and this was my initial potential. So I subtract it, right? So now when I subtract them, there is a bracket over here, right? So this is my initial potential and this is my final potential, right? So when I subtract these two, this and this will, this T of H and T of H will get cut and this 2 into M of H and 2 into M of H will get cut. Then finally, what will remain is that this big O of 1, which we can also write as 1, plus this one, plus this one, right? Plus 1, the num that one tree that increased. So we made T of H as T of H plus 1. So this will be 2 or, or amortized cost is 2 or we can also call it as order of 1. Right? So now we learned that the amortized cost for the insert operation is order of 1. Now let us talk about the create heap operation. Okay? So what we do in case of create heap operation is that it is very simple. We just create an empty node or you can consider a null node. So according to you, the time complexity with, for this operation, if you do asymptotic analysis, you will think that the time complexity should be order of 1 if you do asymptotic analysis. But let us use this potential function in order to find out the amortized cost. 
rather than accepting the asymptotic cost, okay? So, the amortized cost will be CI cap is equal to CI. We will do it in the same way how we did for the insert operation. Uh, so, basically, there will be no change in potential. Why? Because right now, we have not added any trees because when we created a new heap, okay, when we created this new heap, we have not added any new trees, right? So, there is no increase in this quantity, whereas we have not even increased the number of marked nodes. We have not even increased or decreased the number of marked nodes. So, there is no change in this quantity as well, right? So, the change in potential will be zero, right? The change in potential will be zero. But what about the actual cost? The actual cost we can see of this creating this one node seems to be like one, right? Amortized cost for this operation of creating new heap is one or you can call it order of one, right? So this also comes out as or asymptotic cost, right? So now let us look at the next operation. So the next operation is very simple. It is how to find the minimum element in a given Fibonacci heap, right? So suppose we are given this Fibonacci heap. So how to find the minimum element? In the previous video, I have already told that in case of Fibonacci heap, there is a pointer that is always pointing to the minimum element of this Fibonacci heap H. So let us suppose this entire Fibonacci heap is Fibonacci heap H. So there will always be a pointer that will be pointing to the minimum element out of all the elements in this Fibonacci heap H. There will always be a pointer doing that. So suppose if you need to know that which is the minimum element in this entire Fibonacci heap H, all you need to do is that you need to check the value that is stored in this pointer, right? So this pointer in constant amount of time, it will tell you that in my address, the value of three is stored and you will get the value three, right? And how much time is this taking? This is taking simply order of one time. There is no debate about that, right? So this pointer will also get updated. Suppose if uh, this element three is deleted. So this minimum of H will point to the next minimum element of the Fibonacci heap H. It will point at eight, right? If this element gets deleted. So it does its job. And that is why it is going to find us the minimum element in just order of one time, right? So now let us look at the next operation. So now let us look at the union operation, right? So union operation is basically merging two Fibonacci heaps. How do we merge this Fibonacci heap and this Fibonacci heap? This Fibonacci heap is H1 and this Fibonacci heap is H2. So how do we merge these two Fibonacci heaps? So the operation is very simple as compared to what it is in binomial heap where we need to ensure that uh, we don't have tree, we don't have binomial trees of the same order. It is very simple over here. All we need to do is in union operation is that this entire Fibonacci heap, we just have to concatenate on this Fibonacci heap. And we will do this concatenation at this root list, right? So we will do the concatenation over here. So let me just do the concatenation and show you the final result. So here I've concatenated this Fibonacci heap with this Fibonacci heap and the union operation is performed. It is as simple as this. All I had to do was change some of the links over here. Earlier the 16 might be pointing at the first node, right? Because this is a circular doubly linked list. Don't forget that. Even though I'm not drawing it over here, you need to remember this is a circular doubly linked list, right? Right? So you need to remember that. So well, all I need to do was that I needed to change some links and the job was done and the union of H1 and H2 was completed, right? So now according to you, what will be the asymptotic time complexity of this operation? All we are doing is that we are changing some of the links over here. Some of the next and previous pointers we are changing over here for this element and for this element and for the last and for the first and last element. We are just changing some pointers. So it does seem like order of one operation, right? So that was the asymptotic time complexity. But now let's calculate the amortized time complexity like we did for every operation. So the amortized cost is always equal to the actual cost plus change in potential, right? So now actual cost is basically order of one, right? Only we are changing some of the links. Then what about the change in potential? The total number of trees in both the Fibonacci heaps, let us suppose that in one Fibonacci heap, the uh, that in this Fibonacci heap, the number of trees before the merge operation were T1 of H and in this Fibonacci heap, it was T2 of H, right? 
So when we perform the merge operation, you can see that the Fib number of trees in the Fibonacci heap after the merge operation is actually T1 of H plus T2 of H, right? And earlier also, if we uh, look at the total number of trees, it was in this heap uh, T1 of H and in this heap it was T2 of H. So the, there is no difference in the total number of trees, right? So there is no difference in this quantity. So this quantity cannot create a difference in potential. So, so this value will not be affected by T of H, right? Now what about the number of mark nodes? So if suppose over here the number of mark nodes were M2 of H and over here it was M1 of H, while performing the union operation, we are not changing any marked node to unmarked or unmarked to marked, right? We are not doing any such sort of thing. So there will not be any change in this value as well. There will be no change in potential, right? Because we are not changing any marked node in any of the Fibonacci heaps to unmarked and any unmarked node to marked while performing this union operation. All we are doing is changing the links. So there will be no change in potential, so it will be zero. So the amortized cost will also be order of one, right? So until now we have seen the insert operation, the create new heap operation, finding the minimum element operation and this union operation between two Fibonacci heaps and the amortized cost for each one of them was order of one. So that's all for this video. So all these I've written were the amortized time complexities that I calculated in this video. In the next video, we will learn that how to extract or delete the minimum element from a Fibonacci heap, then how to decrease the value of any node or the decrease key operation in Fibonacci heap. Then we will learn that how to delete any element from a Fibonacci heap. So these are relatively complicated operations that require more than one step and we will be learning these operations in the next video. So see you in the next video where we will learn the remaining operations on Fibonacci heaps.